Jensen, Keanu, it is good to see you both. I remember living through this, not in the same way as you, Jensen, but at the time as a Braun GP fan. Yes. I have got I've got the merch. It is Jensen's. Uh, so that is one of my prized possessions. So I was there as a fan. But Jensen, for you, reliving it through this doc, what has that been like? I can't believe it was 14 years on. But uh, <laughs> reliving it, it's it's been a pretty special experience for me. Um, and I've watched it a few times now. Every time I watch it, it makes me emotional. And I know the ending. Uh, but uh, one other thing that really means a lot is that I have two kids now and they never got to to see me race in Formula One. Uh, so when they're old enough, they get to see, you know, I'm going to get emotional now. Um, they're going to get to see their dad win the world championship. And yeah, that's that's so cool. So thank you, Keanu. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so cool. And it's such a great doc as well. Like I said, I know this story and I still loved watching it all over again. Um, Keanu, I don't feel like there's much that really phases you at this point in your career, but how daunting or was it daunting interviewing Bernie Eccleston? Because that man, I won't lie, scares me. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, it was such an honor for for me to have the opportunity to sit and meet him. Uh, he's an, an ex my impression is just an extraordinary intelligence, <laughs> wit, humor, keen, sharp, and grounded. Like, he's like, he talks truth. Yeah. You know, like he, you might not like it, but, and he's very piercing. He can like read you. He can like peer into your soul and yeah. he just asks us, right, Jens? And he like, he'll just yeah. say a thing that cuts you or you, and you'll, you think you're looking at one object and you think you're talking. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> like there's a moment in the dock and I'm like, you know, but they had, but they were driving the same car. And he's like, were they? I was going to say, I was like, he loves to put the cat among the pigeons. Who told you that? Just winding you up. I mean, that's the thing with Bernie. He's, <laughs> he, he, everything he says is for a reason. It's so you know. delicious. Yeah, it, and it, because he's in his 80s, everyone's like, oh, you know, is he as sharp? Yeah. He's yeah. proper sharp. Everything's sharp exactly. and terrifying. It's but amazing. I mean, seeing him and then Luca Montezemolo from Ferrari, could you imagine, Jensen, those two guys in a room? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so good. He was so bitter, Montezuma, and I loved watching it. That's the bit that made me laugh the most was his <laughs> interviews. And you, you, I mean, you could tell the questions you were answering, ans asking him, he was struggling with. And he's like, no, 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 no. Well, it's clear, Keanu, you're a massive F1 fan and you're such a great person I feel to front it, but Jensen, and I know, J and I can't, can't use right here, but for you, why is he the right person that you do? You know, there's so many people in Formula One, people were thinking, oh, surely someone from F1 should have been fronting it. But when you watch it, it makes sense. But for those who haven't seen it yet, why is Keanu the right person to front this doc? Many reasons. One, as soon as Keanu asks you a question, you feel that you have to, you're obligated to answer it in the correct <laughs> way. <clears throat> uh, but also, I think it's fantastic that it's somebody from outside of the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, I written an autobiography and I did it with a, a ghost writer. Yeah. And I did it with a ghost writer that knew nothing about Formula One. And it, it was great because it was my words. And yeah. it made it so important that it wasn't someone from the inside that put their, you know, had their take yeah. on it. Yeah. So... I don't mean that disrespectfully, Keanu. But, you know, having someone from outside of the Formula One world, I think is great. Uh, but he did his homework as well. So yeah. you know, some of the questions he asked to everyone yeah. were, were tricky um, in some ways. And I think he got the best out of everyone that he, that he interviewed. Montezemolo, I thought, you know, it was great what he could get out of him. You know, he's very controlled normally and, you know, yeah. with the fry way of what you can yeah. say and what you can't say. But... You you got everything out of him you possibly could. The same with Bernie. The same with Ross. And it was and Christian Horner. I mean, oh. <laughs> he came across really well. All you need to say is he is the one. 
Like Take Keanu's the one. Oh, no, he's the know. one. No, no, no. <laughs> um, well, actually, now that you've interviewed Ross, I have always imagined him to be like a big teddy bear. So for me, I still feel like he is like that. Do you still see him like that? Or is he that silent assassin that everyone else in the paddock seems to think that he is? I think both can be true. But he's a silent assassin in racing. Uh, uh, stories people speak about him and and interact, having the chance to meet him, speak with him. There's a part of him that's a gentleman. Yeah. You know? And he's he cares. He's a good person. I think even his managing style, you know, people were expecting Ross to come to Honda and fire everybody and do his mm -hmm. own. And he was like, no, I'm going to listen to everybody. I think there's some quality here. We just need to, you know, start this culture and start this way. Um, and you know, that's, but then when it came to racing, you know, it's, it's racing, right? Jensen, <laughs> you want Ross on your side. Which you is yeah. You know, I met him once and he was just, to me, he was just a big tuddly teddy bear. And that's, <laughs> that's the way. He's got, a, he's got a good sense of humor and he's of, of course brilliant, yeah. and, but you know, he does have those piercing eyes that look at you, you know, he, he looks <laughs> at you. You know, and you're, I feel like you're getting scanned, <laughs> you know, but anyway, he's lovely. I love he's that. Love this inside. <laughs> um, we did actually used to call him the bear as well, which oh, I'm sure he's going to love. Love that. Bring that back. Bring that back to the paddock. Um, and finally, just before I go, we've seen so many changes to F1. Um, and I know, obviously, you both know your F1. So I'm curious to know for each of you whether – you would you like the way that it's going and I'm trying to introduce new stuff or would you like to see a return to, to the traditional kind of format, you know, practice on the Friday, quality on the Saturday, race on the Sunday? I think we have a good thing with the standard weekend, you know, with two hours of practice Friday, hour on Saturday morning, qualifying race on Sunday. It's pretty much been like that for, for years. Yeah. So don't mind mixing it up now and again. I, I don't think there's an issue with trying new things. I think we've always got to be open to trying new things in F1. It's the pinnacle. You know, we can try stuff. It doesn't work. We get rid of it. Yeah. So I'm open to change. Um, and I know you were talking about sprint races. And I <laughs> grew up in sprint in Brazil. But I know a lot of fans are against it because it gives away what's going to happen in the race. So I think we have to listen to what the fans want as well. That is important. Yeah without them the sport doesn't exist um but uh, we also have to think about manufacturers oems what's important to them as well how about you keanu what direction do you want to see it going in direction i'm as long as there's racing i'm happy there you, know? you go <laughs> I mean, I, so whether it's a sprint or not a sprint definitely um i like them once in a while too i like i don't i don't think every weekend for formula one should have a sprint i don't know if they did yeah. okay but I think it's nice to pop them in there once in a while. Also, because yeah. it takes different strategies, and with those different strategies, maybe the result isn't as, you know, set. Pick and choose the tracks a little bit. Yeah. For yeah. spin rate. Like Brazil yeah. was an awesome track for it. Always, always. Um, guys, listen, I love the both of you. I love this story. I love this sport. So I was never not going to love this documentary. Good luck with it when it comes out, because what an epic story to be a part of. Thank you so much for bringing it to our screens. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Take care.